Sé que de lo bajo, sé que de lo bajo, Uruguay o ti de otro lado. Forge. Hello and welcome to the Ashen Forge. I am Phantom X, joined as always by Diggs and the legendary Neurotoxin. How are y'all doing? Oops, I don't know why I made that gesture. I've got band aids on my fingers. I was <laughs> definitely not making some sort of obscene or uh, fascist <laughs> gesture there. <laughs> I my apologies if anybody spotted that and it's like, oh my god, what the hell did he just do? No, and no, that no, is no. the end of Neuro's career. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I was no, honestly not. If I was to... like doing it for reals and like trying to own it or something, or trying to like sneak it in at the bottom of the screen or something, that's one thing. But you know, I'm just I'm trying to wave, but I'm also like, yeah, I've got band aids on my fingers. Deal with it. And I should have committed one way or the other, or just use Lefty. There we go. Lefty's better for waving. I guess I usually write. Uh, right-handed wave. All good, all good. So, any and you know what? That's something that I actually don't think we've talked about much at all. What do we think the emotes are gonna be like? How how much and how many in um uh Ashes huh? of Creation? We're starting off uh, with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit that one real fast because it's kind of an odd subject, but. I believe I've mentioned in the past in um, you know some previous episodes about how I've seen uh, fully modded GTA RP sort of servers where people have you know they've got to drill through a bunch of menus, but pretty much actions for all sorts of behaviors. Uh, so so many in so many different ways that it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Like. Being able to set specific parts of the body to specific, you know, movements in a gesture or whatever. And I suppose it would be creating a macro that would fire a bunch of those at once so that you always hit your dance pose the same way. Um, but what, what do you guys think about that? Um, being able to have a lot of emotes to be expressive, to actually do like, you know, performative entertainment or something. Is that is that too much? Is that like, don't worry about it till post release, or is it the sort of thing that you would be hoping to see uh, come along with one point oh? Who's going to be messing with that during two fifty on two fifty PvP battles? Oh no, it's not for doing. I mean, I guess you could do it in PvP if you've got a. Um... That's what the game is, right? If you've got your little um, emote macro set, so you do your little victory pose, like right after you've killed somebody, or when you're like standing your ground, you 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 know do like a little sort of thing. I mean, primary I... goal of the the primary goal of the game is 250 versus 250 uh, PVP. Oh, it's, it's just a part of the RP. game. No, that's that that that's the audience. That's that's the gameplay that you don't hear about emotes. And it's funny because when you ask Steven about RP stuff, he he goes totally crazy blank. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure, there will be emotes, of course. All MMORPGs have emotes. We're supporting <laughs> RP. Yes, I agree in chat there. Dance battles instead of PvP battles. I would love to see bards not just singing, but also being able to do dances. And so, yes, being able to do a literal dance battle. Um, well, see who's got the best buffs. We know there's chicken I dancing. Ashes is. We yeah, know there Ashes is chicken is dancing confirmed. Game. Yeah, Ashes is not that game. So you can expect emotes. I think we'll have a reasonable, reasonable amount of emotes for an MMORPG, um, like uh, as many as you would see in the World of Warcraft, say, um, because. Margaret is. I've been there in a while. And I think, so. 
<laughs> no, I'm just know. saying in, in in general, like, you know, your average MMORPG, I think it's going to have emotes. I don't think it's going to have a crazy number more emotes than what we've typically seen in the past. But I expect them to be, you know, reasonably robust because Margaret's on the team, and I think she's interested in having that. But it's not going to be anything crazy because that's not what they're trying to make. Um, it is curious to wonder how easy emotes will be and how easy it is to design emotes with uh, Unreal Engine 5. But um, I'm not expecting this team to be focusing on that because it's not really an RP game. It's a large battle PvP game. I would at least hope there's you know some way to access the things that other people are doing too, that it isn't like... You know, I would love to do the troll dance on my Tauren when I was playing WoW, but that wasn't available to me. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think I there's a lot more um, streamlining and uh, using using the models and the, the rigs in as similar a way as possible that it probably wouldn't be very difficult to have, you know, yes, these are all the cultural dances, but, you know, maybe you've got to learn it somewhere to be able to uh, start doing it or do it along with other people to actually gain the skill instead of just like a skill, I say, th to gain that emote. But that it is something that everybody's able to kind of get everybody's special dances and hand waves and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I do think, um, and this I also get this from World of Warcraft, and I'm not sure how much of this will be in Ashes. I think it's going to be a little bit more limited in Ashes just by what we've seen from how the cosmetics work. Or not even the cosmetics, I guess, but just the gear in general and how they look on different um, uh, cultures. Um, but yes, I would like it if uh, my Vec could um, live in a Dunir city and start picking up their cultural habits, um, wearing their clothes or um, doing their emotes because I'm a citizen of that node that's where i live um and i value that culture just like uh you know if i choose to move to japan you know i might start uh adopting some of their cultural habits just because i'm a fan of that culture um but but i i'm not sure how much of that it'll be interesting to see how much of that kind of stuff we get in the cross culture stuff we'll get in ashes of creation yeah I mean, I bet there'll yeah. be quite a bit. I, I imagine Steven is also someone who likes emotes. Um, I was trying to go through the Kickstarter. We know there's the chicken emote. Um, chicken but, dance, yes. Yeah, we know there's probably going to be some form of teabagging, although that's just sitting, I guess. <laughs> so There's probably uh, uh, just a, a normal non-chicken dance as well, I would imagine. Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. But I was looking, you know, as far as Kickstarter, there weren't emotes uh, that what they I, there was something I, I but it's uh, chat emojis. So depending on your so there was nothing related to emotes, but depending on your pledge, you would have access to tier one, two, or three chat emojis. Um, I don't know what that means. We'll find out, I guess. But yeah, you know, I totally forgotten about that one. So so if you're at a higher tier, you can put up the uh, the glowing shiny ones that are actually animated. So you can be a jerk and just fill chat with a bunch of like alternating color versions of those and annoy it. Interestingly, you also, I guess I didn't think this through, knowing that we have the character creator hopefully coming at some point. At this point, it should be with PI because uh, I think it was January when they he said either February or March they would get it to PI. Um, now they've not confirmed that, not that they would although steven seems to let us know when big things are released to pi but anyways um additional character creation customization options tiers one two and three so i'm i'm highly curious what that means once we actually get to find out um what we would have access to in the character creator different than everyone else is is interesting to me um that seems to be opposite of what you would expect with a character that what we've seen. So I don't know, maybe it's just tattoos, I guess, as my as potentially all it is. Um so 
anyways you know thinking thinking about emotes um and for me world of warcraft um this is not quite the same thing because you don't have fast travel in uh i mean you might have some zeppelins i don't know what the scientific node um fast travel is in ashes but um when i was riding the zeppelins in um or even the boats in the world of warcraft i wished we could do more kinds of things um that would resemble us being on a ship or being on a boat like maybe we um help put coal in a fire or whatever put fuel to do whatever uh i would hope we could maybe do some cooking there or something other stuff besides just standing around and dancing in front of each other um so i would love to get to a place where the emotes that are available um interact with the world a little bit more um than just hey i'm gonna dance at you now i, I really there. i really now want to see 250 people just dancing in one spot I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. I hadn't thought of that. I Dead think we will see that. The streets. Well, uh, yeah, so I guess more to see with the emotes. I've not really paid a lot of attention to the live streams to see if we've seen um, you know, anything you know, uh, not mentioned, if there was anyone in the background, any other players that were doing things beyond that uh, chicken dance. So we did find um, live stream uh, is Friday, so um, March 29th, it will be the fighter. So have they Thoughts? actually announced that the fighter? Yeah. The Q and A is up. So, so mm -hmm. the the first thing that crosses my mind is, um, what will they be doing to make all weapons? worthwhile for fighters in their own various ways or is there going to be the sort of thing where certain weapons don't actually get access to the sort of augments and abilities um on you know that that they have available so you'll get things that maybe enhance your melee weapons maybe it'll enhance a bow but if you try to use a wand, it's like, yeah, this isn't going to work on this. You, you can't use that ability here. Um, or if there is going to be room for a wand fighter to exist, if if that I mean, is something that will be made, you know, not just viable, but um, you know, able to be utilized in a in a meaningful way. Well, I mean, I think it's going to be similar to. Um shield bash and uh uh the bow weapons um for a ranger um some of those things are not going to work well if you don't have a bow uh some of those abilities are not going to work well if you don't have a shield um yeah. i think it's going to be a similar type thing yeah so so for uh, any character can wield any weapon but uh mm -hmm. for basic attacks so certainly you could have a fighter uh, wielding a wand uh, for basic attacks, but their abilities will be some. It doesn't say all abilities, but so some ranged or melee abilities will be tied to a particular weapon. Um, interestingly enough, it says if those are sort of your offhand or a bow, for example. Uh, so you maybe you're a ranger and you have a sword, uh, but then you have a bow um, attached as well that it will auto uh, automatically swap in uh that weapon when you use the skill so you don't have to worry about weapon swapping but uh so i don't know if you could yeah have a ranger with a bow and a wand uh with a wand and a bow have some wand attacks and then you know your your bow abilities automatically flips the bow into to place um it'll be interesting to see what kind of builds you can come up with uh that are viable or not viable especially since uh, each weapon has its own skill progression we've really not seen that either Mm -hmm. I suppose another question that I wonder for the fighter is if they are going to have uh as a as an archetype exclusive the ability for dual wielding for people that say, you know what, I don't think I need a shield and I don't think I want to use a two hander. I want to dual wield. And maybe they're, you know, it's not a 
double damage sort of thing so much as you get 0.75 from each one and you get a you know cumulative 1.5 total so it's you know it's a, maybe a similar increase to using a two-hander but it lets you use the buffs from each of them and so you're using two weapons with uh weapon associated buffs instead of uh, a weapon and a shield with you know each of them having their own associated buffs uh that's not something i think they've really talked about at all um i know people love their dual wielding especially if they're playing a uh a drow and they've got some sort of fancy wolf or panther or whatever as their as their pet but you know and that was I think we were, wasn't it at 2014 um, SOE Live where they said that uh, the most popular name in all of the EverQuest series was as many variations of Drizz as you could get? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you know, I expect people are going to want to do that if they can, but uh, is that something that you would expect to see either um, revealed on this one or perhaps confirmed that it's not going to be a thing on this one? I don't know. I was not thinking of dual wielding with uh, fighters. I typically think of dual wielding for rangers and rogues. Um, and that being said, um, similar to how rangers have a form of stealth and uh, rogues have a form of stealth, I mean, fighters might be able to dual wield, but I don't think that would prevent rangers and or rogues also having some form of that as well. Uh, Considering that we're coming from a um, Pathfinder homebrew yeah. game, I'd imagine there's uh, dual dual wielding wielding fighters. I'm actually in my head now, starting to take this idea of a cleric or a templar in many different places too, uh, with a book in one hand, a shield in the other, a book in one hand, a sword in the other. Um, mm -hmm. It could be some very very interesting play styles. Just the image of the book and shield, I think, is a pretty interesting one. I love it as uh, I'm sitting here thinking about it. So it's it's definitely when I think of um, D and D and Pathfinder, the idea of a spellcaster who actually does have specialization to use a shield for some reason, and so they would have their spellcasting focus in one hand and a shield in the other, and in doing so. Uh, you know, their casting focus could be their spell book. So yes, the uh, the the spell book and shield, or um, something like that for a, a cleric. Definitely, they could be using their 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 faith's holy uh, text or whatever as the source of their their power, and uh, awkwardly read uh, very bad prose as they cast their spells. <laughs> I'm so used to the mace shield combo. Um, but yeah, having a book in place. Uh, book and sword or mace. Yeah, that also, yes, that that would be a lot of fun too. Um, book is my shield. <laughs> I mean, it's magic, right? It could. You, you could hold your it's book. It's miraculous. Up, it's you... miraculous. Not magical, miraculous. You see the shimmering outline of an oval circle, or an oval circle, a, a circle uh, that blocks incoming damage. Uh, yeah, that, that would be a fun play style, I think. Um, so, anyways, um, I've been playing a lot of Rift, and they have a lot of unique combinations that like this that that offer some very um, fun play styles different that actually feel different <laughs> my biggest concern with having eight by eight is that many of those are going to feel very much samey samey but um we'll see so if so what are you what are you thinking about for the fighter i'm not a fighter so i don't really care i'm more <laughs> interested i you know i think for me it's more seeing how far along they are I think than than actually the substance of it all, um, and that could change. I, I was also would never say I was a ranger player, uh, but once they really showed off the ranger, um, I'm very interested in trying it out now. So I guess that could happen with the fighter as well. Um, in Rift, I've been a melee character, uh, primarily a shaman. So um, 
which is very different. I've kind of forced myself to do, I'm usually a, a, either a healer or a, or a caster or something from range. Uh, so it's been a different way to play for me. So, um, but mostly I'm just, I want to see if they have a full kit kind of where they're at. Cause I think that helps us understand what to expect a little bit better for alpha two, um, which will be here in what three, three to eight. No, wait, I'm, I'm way off. One's quarter. I'd be here soon, soonish. <laughs> what why do you why really what third quarter what is that july i i've been a game dev i don't trust dates july to september um, I especially i especially don't trust steven's dates so it will be here <laughs> soon it's not something i would say um but um um yeah i'm just hoping to see anything about the fighter because we've seen very little i think the main thing I know is that they can do a rush. Um, do you think this will be the first time we get to see some secondary archetype augments, even even if it's just fighter fighter? Maybe we get to see some fighter augments for the first That'd time. That'd be cool to see. Um, if we even see a fully intact um, skills and upgrades tree sort of thing instead of one of them seeming correct and one of them just being this little zigzaggy stair thing. Um, or just Phantom, two straight lines, actually, I think it was. Phantom said in chat that Stephen was asked in Discord this weekend if they were still on track, and he said yes. They were still on track for before 2020, right up until two months before 2020. So that's not telling me anything either. Again, I I th I don't think they put this date out there unless they they could put a viable A two out. I think right now it's just polish and you, seeing what you, else they can. That's still what they're shooting for, but that far out, if you're four months out, you can miss the date. If you're five months out, you can miss the date. So, all right, so um, I agree. Uh, and chat mentions, you know, if we haven't seen all of the base classes, then we're ways off from seeing augmented classes. 100% agree. I don't think there's any chance we really see augmentations at this point. Although, if you talk to Nice Gaming, who's getting an Ashes cre uh, creator, uh, YouTube and Twitch, um, he's he's fun to watch. He's a pretty cool guy. He will tell you that we have already seen an augment and points to, uh, I think it was the Node live stream uh, where one of the Ranger abilities was an ice uh, form or it was blue in color. Um mm -hmm. But it's debatable whether or not that was the same skill or whether it was an augment. So, I, I think we've seen a couple of augments, um, at least slotted. Um, yeah, right around the ranger and uh, not the ranger, right around the fighter and rogue um, little bits that we saw. Um, I think we saw some augments there. But um, I don't think he's going to show us a full kit. Um, uh because they're gonna want some surprises and i don't think even if we did get augments it would be like all four schools or anything like that so mm -hmm. um i don't think he's gonna reveal all four schools um of any of the primary archetypes connected to secondary archetypes um i don't think we're gonna see that before alpha 2. not to say i'm gonna be very very disappointed if um augments really come down to basically the color or elemental type of a an arrow for example um, i'm so used to playing games where your ranger just sort of naturally you know has access to a fire arrow or some or, you know or poison arrow uh, something of varying elemental types that if in ashes the only way we get access to these different types of arrows uh, is through augmenting. I'm gonna be. <laughs> that's gonna feel very cheap uh, because that that's just that's n literally adding nothing new. If anything, that's just take that's making it more challenging to bring uh, the class uh, ranger in this case up to what exists just baseline everywhere. Um, so I hope yeah. that's much I would, more than I that. would. I would agree. That's not really a secondary archetype, and from what he said, it's supposed to be much more significant than that it's that would be flavor and it's not supposed to just be flavor it's supposed to have significant differences um so 
but yeah, the this stream, I you know, I also think we're going to get to see a con uh, continuation uh, from last. You know, when we ended last stream, the the node leveled up, and uh, this new story arc happened, and you know, all this this mist and dark whatever came out, and um, they they mentioned that there was a new story arc and the you know an NPC down the road. Um, I actually think that was leading towards probably this stream is where they're going to be playing through. Uh, which I actually think is kind of neat if they continue that process, kind of taking us from one place to another um, continuously per stream. Uh, but we've still seen so very little of the world. So There was a question about that. Do we want to see more of the world during the streams? Um, I think the obvious answer is yes. Uh, who asked that? I would definitely like to see more. Um, it was, it was somehow like in one of the Twitter feeds or something like that said, oh, people were asking, um, would you like to see more of the world, more of the map? Of course we would. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, a, there's so many questions. That's another one, right? What other biomes have we seen? Uh, none other than basically one, right? We've seen. I think you mean what others have they done a playthrough of correct right there's been mm -hmm. i think demoed stuff of deserts and things but nothing where we've actually seen them playing um my hope is that that is just them again trying to, to withhold information that that we get to see uh later on uh but then there's always this question in my mind of is it just not done is it not ready to be shown like yeah is the riverlands more complete than any of the other ones mm -hmm. Um, you next PTSD. Well, because the more I, you, you really start to think about it, um, you know, it's it's not a simple. Take World of Warcraft for example, right? It's not a simple. We're going to put the Red Ridge Mountains here, as a as it's you know this sort of elevated biome with some sparse vegetation and uh, and that's it. We we've done it. We've completed it. Like when you have nodes like that that can physically change the characteristics of that that specific zone or area will change which i imagine just takes time to to create so yeah um we should all start a uh we should actually just start a, like a a contest of how long alpha 2 is going to last um <laughs> you know how to do prop betting for sports right all these really weird bets in the super bowl yeah. and stuff like that we, sh we should start some sort of prop betting for ashes of creation like how long until you see all eight uh, all of the races how long until you you know when do we see augments um you know how many <laughs> how many uh um, crafting uh professions are uh, uh going to be with alpha 2 at the beginning how many will be there by the end we should, so we need to have somebody start uh, doing this in Discord, some some prop betting on things like this. They do the bingo card, so only bet we need is whether or not the game will release before twenty thirty. <laughs> I mean, I would hope. Uh, I he, I still go back, and I I, I think this was just an oversight, like not paying attention to what you had said, but I still go back to when Stephen was last with us. And you said that, like, it'll be released by 2030, right? And he just sort of laughed. He didn't he didn't actually respond one way or the other. He just laughed. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. um, how would you feel? This came up in uh, Narc's stream. Uh, Narc is another content creator who I think most people who really follow Ash's closely at least knows his name probably um if you don't watch his stuff probably know of him um this was actually came up today in a conversation that his his thought is because this is more for beta when will we see beta uh, and his thought was we will never see beta that that ashes will be in a perpetual alpha state uh forever uh it, it, always in development and uh, didn't mean that in a bad way, so that's okay. I think he said his favorite game ever is Seven Days to Die, which has been in alpha early access for years and years, and still is. Um, what, do you, what do you think about that? I feel like there's some legal legalese associated with Kickstarter, where you have to you have yeah. to say things. Yeah. 
I mean, what the games are always always in development. That's been going on since uh, what year? At least twenty years, um, if not twenty five. Um, the moment you were able to do fixes online um, instead of having to send out uh, new CDs as a patch. I mean, games are always in development. So yeah, I, I, it's probably uh, the era of the internet that makes sense. Otherwise, you'd have to get a hard copy of the latest edition. You wouldn't just get like an update disc. Yeah. I'm totally fine with that. I I, I think, uh, while, while I think there should be clearly defined alpha beta release stages, uh, the reality is those don't really exist anymore. Um, most people pay no attention to that. It's, it's you know, uh, early access or whatever. Um, I actually kind of wish more things would release with, I don't want to say less content, but just let us get in and play earlier so so ashes for example maybe not having the entire world of vera complete um, but giving us you know a, a fourth of the biomes and and stories and things to actually spend time in and then just continue with content updates every couple of months i actually i i think that's a perfectly fine probably more ideal way to release content uh to do development rather than the sort of World of Warcraft, every two years you get an expansion kind of dump and people play it for a while, and then you're kind of waiting. What do you... I think part of it is that they they don't really want to um, uh, uh, be in the state where they've got to manage two different branches, one being the live branch that people are playing and one being the dev branch that they're going to have to merge over, especially if it's something where they're going to do a six-month unreal version upgrade or however long it's going to take and then they have to uh merge where people are at in the game in the state of the world as it was on the previous version with all of the fixes and reconciliation to make it work with the new one plus all of that all of that tech and everything that's um that's a hell of a lot of data i have to manage so it definitely makes sense that if they're going to um, do testing while they're in a state where they can continue to iterate on it and there's no major um, you know, updates that are going to need things essentially taken down or expected to be you know, wiped thoroughly and heavily uh over a period of time. You know, and and that's another thing. People might even be okay with the wife, but it might still be that just um you know, trying to do two things at once isn't really going to work out. And so they would still have to take the game down for however many months while they make the new version or just keep it rolling, but they would be getting, you know, less ideal data and stuff and require a lot more resources and hands on deck to do it so economically it might just be better because people aren't you know paying a subscription to play the earlier access so there does have to be a price point consideration there too you know and it's actually kind of a thought for me that that might even be what the end of alpha 2 and the beginning of beta 1 is that they're going to see where the engine is at where all the tech and features are at where their bottlenecks were, where the hindrances were, and, you know, go through the updates and their features to figure out where they need to, what version of the Unreal Engine they need to uh, land on to get all the features and functionality they need for resolving all the bottlenecks for future testing. And that might take a while. So, um, you know, there's there's some thoughts like that kind of going on. I have no idea if they're in the middle of a version change right now. You know, they, I don't think they've announced it, but they still could be. I think the problem is is that they stated that Alpha 2 is going to be persistent and they're not ready to be persistent. Um, I think if they were, you know, it would be nice since it's so long, three years at least between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2. Um, it would have been nice to have gotten a, you know, once a year to get to play for a couple of months or one month or something like that. 
Um, but they couldn't really go that direction because they said that the next alpha was going to be persistent and they're not ready to be persistent. But they, Intrepid has a much better track record than a lot of the games that we followed. Um, we didn't get to play Revival at all. We got to play Ashes. We didn't get a chance to play um, Chronicles of Illyria. We have a chance to play Ashes. Um, so I think what they're doing right now is perfectly fine. Um, would it have been nice to have less than three years in between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2? Sure. But we had two good years, 2017 through 2019, 2020, even 2021. We got to jump in and play quite a bit. Um, so um, that's better than a lot of games in development out there. Um, and I don't need to see them rush anything. It's just, you know, it might take a little longer. Pantheon's a it great example. It might take a little longer. Pa Pantheon's a great example. They, they have such a small team and that things have been fumbled so much that, I, you know, luckily I think right now, you know, they've started this season thing uh, where depending on your pledge, you can have four weeks, two weeks, or one week of access. Um, which is so weird that you'd spend $50 for one week of access. But anyways, um, that's something I wish they had done quite a bit, uh, quite a while ago that, you know, they have a couple of zones, like just, you know, you're a small group, just, just put out what you have. Um, don't, don't try to spend five years creating this humongous world, like, cause it's, it's not going to happen. I, they've been in development how long now? And it, it hasn't, um, we have thrown fast and I, you know, a couple of places, but, um, you know, so I think in I'm certain not situations, sure I what you're suggesting, you're suggesting to be able to play for a couple of weeks. Oh, their season model. I I don't know what you're asking. Yeah, when no, you say no. This what I'm saying, play. what I'm saying is, I think there are certain circumstances where I would rather see games release uh, earlier with less content that they get to bring content online faster. What what you like, you're mixing two things up. So what I was saying is, right now, uh, Pantheon has started a seasons thing where depending on your your pledge level you get either four weeks access two weeks access or one week access i think the whole thing's weird but i'm not mixing anything <laughs> up because i don't know what it is that you're actually suggesting i'm asking because what you're saying reminds me of landmark and no because landmark I'm of, what, no what, I, what landmark was about an no, what happens is you release something and if because uh, it sounds like you might be suggesting that it stay live until I'm you know, suggesting while that content takes a long time to create and that yeah. if your systems are otherwise working, I would rather see especially small studios start taking the approach of letting us into less content rather than trying to spend five years creating a full world. And I I'm asking for how long are we going to be in the content? Until they create the next batch. I don't know. That's going to be... So I, I don't know what you're saying, because it sounds again That's like... It's pretty Landmark, clear what I'm saying. Where? No, it's not, because if you're in Neuro, do you understand what I'm saying? If you're I in think perpetually... I get what you're saying. Yeah. If you're in perpetually, like they were trying to do with Landmark, they're going to be working on trying to... Foc they're going to be focused on uh, making it a good experience for those people who are playing and they are not going to have yeah. the time. Landmark was an incomplete game. The the game. Landmark it had... was an incomplete game because they had Landmark live and they kept trying to make that a good experience and they weren't working. No, on the it was, it was an game. incomplete game because their tools weren't complete. They didn't have stuff working. Uh, that's okay. not what I'm suggesting. This isn't no, hard, Diggs. This I'm is this I'm, is no. I'm telling you, this is not the, what you're saying is not actually completely true. The primary problem with Landmark and EverQuest Next is that they did a live game, and they focused on making that a good experience and keeping it live, and they did not do anything else for the development part. And that is the problem. That's the danger yeah. that you get in when you release part of the game and you're in early access. See, I'm not talking early access. You you're mixing apples that. and oranges. You're just not understanding what I'm trying to say. I'm uh, just asking you very simply, how long would we have access to that content? It really has no bearing on what I'm trying to say. It would be essentially uh, like, no, it doesn't. It would be essentially like taking um, expansion content uh, and, and, and speeding up. that. 
Yeah, I don't think not, we're going to yeah. move on. I don't think you're going to get what I'm trying to say. So now we're going to move on because this could go on and on. And, and I don't think we're ever going to connect on words here. So um, in a way that makes sense. So I do want to we're gosh, uh, 40 minutes already. So there were several forum things and Diggs, I know you actually did contribute. Uh, what was it? Uh, this one about I'm so tired of the PVP PVE conversation what was the name of it i can't oh here hypothesis confirmed the real reason why pve players don't like pvx for aoc eureka um <laughs> let me i'm gonna i i don't know why we keep having this this conversation um Basically, it ends with adopt a Care Bear and educate them. Essentially, the post is saying that we uh, that that PVE players just simply do not understand what PVX is, and that is why they don't want it. And if they would learn what it is, uh, you know, if people who played PVX took the time to help them understand, then they would love it. Uh, the quote is: "The vast majority of PVE players have the wrong idea of what PVX is and AOC." They need to be educated. They need clear information so that they themselves realize that PVX is a great help to them. Thoughts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went from it's... Candy Crush to World of Warcraft. And I love that game and I don't like getting beat up, so I don't do things where I get beat up. This Ashes game, why, it looks like a lot of fun, but I'll get beat up everywhere. I don't like doing that. You know, like I, I, it's what what's the audience we're trying to get here? If we're if we're basically saying, you know, this is you know, screw this for PVE players in such a condescending way. Yeah, there are going to be people who are primarily PVE players playing the game, and it's not for the reasons you think they are. It's because they want to engage in all the other systems that aren't PVP because the game has more to it than PVP. It has a shitload more than like most MMOs in terms of a lot of the depth they're going for in you know what you can just do living in town and being involved in politics in a place you know you're not going to get beat up that much doing that uh people will want to beat you up everybody's going to want to beat up the mayor of course but um don't leave town and it shouldn't be a problem it's um it, it, it that, that the whole thing just seems really uh really weird like you know as if the person thinks that the only the only thing people should be doing in the game or in any game is pvp otherwise what's the point it's you know there's there's a lot to do in the game that isn't fighting other people um you know even even the idea of just going out there and looking like a squishy target mining a lot of resources and then when people go to kill you it's like oh no <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, give this one on up over to you. You're going to have to take a red name on this one. Ha ha ha. Like that. It, it That's still something that somebody might be doing as, you know, a PVP adjacent objective. That's still not what a PVE player is necessarily looking for in the game. Um, but I don't think trying to get PVE players to play PVP is how you're going to get them to, you know, enjoy the game more if that's not what you're here for you know it's just an inconvenience pvp and the systems around it i'm just surprised i would be expecting to see these conversations pop up when new people uh find out about the game and as new people pop on the forums um they're unfamiliar with exactly what the game is um and so they have questions and they're thinking it's going to be like this or like or you know why would i want to play this game blah blah blah. and then when they figure out what the actual design is then they'll choose whether or not they're going to stay i'm just surprised that somebody who has been on the forums for four plus years is acting like they can't understand why the people who uh don't like the design or don't want to play the design rather I won't even say don't like the design because the design is fine. Um, the people who don't want to play that design don't want to play it because they have a different play style. And Ashes is not 
made for all play styles. It's really made for one specific play style, um, which is Stevens. Um, and if you aren't part of that audience, then very likely you aren't going to play. That's okay. There will be other games to play. Yeah, this this was one. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I get so tired of this that I don't usually jump in. But you're right. It's 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 weird because it's also created by a PvP player. Um, usually, I think I'm used or or accustomed to the person coming, as you mentioned, digs new or whatever that's not been around a while, and like, why are there not PVE servers? And this this is crap. This isn't going to work. But this is someone who's established. This is someone who's, um, you know, also been. Um, in the, the 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 discussion before, you know, I, I get so tired. I actually wrote a like, very long post on this. My very first thing, I just said that many PVEers don't like the idea of forced PVP. It has nothing to do with PVX. Um, you know, this they keep that has become sort of the new buzz thing. Well, it's PVX, PVX. Um, you just don't know what it is. You just you just uh, and as I put on the forums, like I'm fine with this model. Like I'm not trying to argue there should be PVE servers. My personal opinion is they would fail. They wouldn't work. Um, to, to staying true to Steven's vision and the pillars as they are, PVE servers would not work. It just that nodes would not work. I them. disagree. I, you can make I, them but work. I don't want to go off on that tangent. But wait, wait. You can make them work, but it would be like an RP event. It would be co-op PVP. You would be coming together and saying, "Hey, we're going to PVP at this time." Or we've decided as a group that we PvP want to get this time, siege this or whatever. We've as um, a group. You can do it. It would just be co-op. It would not just be a spontaneous uh, thing like on the on the actual servers. But I would I would go for that in any case. I would go a different direction and say uh, flagging required for all open world PvP, including the open seas. Um, you don't attack caravans directly maybe you can put traps down maybe you can try to get bandits to go attack it and uh all pvp is uh exclusive to sanctioned content so like where you're actually signing up on a board for a battle that's coming up and that's how you get involved with it that that would be probably how a pve server would operate Maybe, maybe official caravans, maybe all caravans, I don't know. That would probably be like the sticking point. Maybe, maybe mules you can't, but caravans you can. Um, but there would have to be some sort of a, um, you know, only if you flag and there aren't uh, mandatory flagging sort of things. Oh. Uh, would you be able to do it? But anyway, uh, I, I take it that's not the only thing you wanted to say there. No, perhaps that's actually I think could be a good discussion for us to have one day. Is is could I thought about making a, a standalone video on it before, but um, no, this was just more so. I get really tired of this conversation, and I'm really getting tired of the word PVX. Um, that you know, if you've watched us long enough, I I despise risk versus reward. Every time I hear that, I just want to strangle somebody. Um, you know, now there is no reward without great risk and risk versus, well, the risk is this and the risk is that. Um, that has grown on me very poorly. Um, but now I'm really getting tired of PVX as well. Um, and I'm trying to get scroll to what I said. It was a long post. Um, I had known I the phrase PVPVE for, I, I, I'd use the phrase PVPVE for a while. That's how I had previously heard it that. Yes, your your you know player versus environment, but you're also fighting other players along the way, as you know one one sort of model. And so, PVX player versus experience. It's like, okay, what what part of the experience isn't versus players and versus environment? Yeah, I don't know, but I, I... so it's you know it could be buzzwordism. Yeah, and that's what I, I start off by saying. Why does the term PVX continue to get thrown around? Is it to hide the term PVP in hopes that somehow PVE players will be more tolerant of the discussion? If that is the case, I don't think that's going to work. They don't care or worry about PVX. Uh, there are already numerous games that exist with PVX. They care about forced PVP. Uh, it is that simple, and this version of PVX, meaning Ashes, includes that. I said ask any PVE player with reservations about Ashes 
and that is what they will tell you. And, and simply telling them, well, you just don't know what PBX is, means nothing, and will do nothing. Um, it's just, mm-hmm. I, I get, I'm so tired of that term. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, mean, but... I actually have kind of a different angle for things. Let's not call it a PVE server. Instead, a PVX server or PVPVE or whatever it may be called is the standard. And if you really want to get down and brawl and be dirty, there is a strict PVP server. Outside of no combat areas, you are automatically flagged. Now, that that could be maybe a more appealing way to deal with it, that people who like to fight and want to fight it, always want to be fighting and always want to have to look over their shoulder. Those are the folks that would be on a strict PvP server that anyone you see, you can kill. If you think you can take out, take down that dude that's mining a node that you don't have the tools for, well, hell, check his ass. Take the node. Take his resources. You know, that's maybe he'll just run away and you can just take it after he breaks it and hasn't uh, looted it yet. So, you know, I could I could see that being the alternative. Don't think about it as a PvE server as the as the way to resolve it. Instead, make a PvP server as the way to resolve it. The people that truly, truly, truly want to fight, 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 fight. Anyone you can see, you can kick them right in the nuts. Then, um yeah, a PvP server would be the way to resolve it. I think they it would enjoy rem- it more. It kind of reminds me of, um, you know, there's a girl who lived two doors down from me when I was a kid who did not like chocolate. And that just blew my mind. Like, how can you not like chocolate? Like, everybody <laughs> likes chocolate. Yeah, you know, you, you must not have had good chocolate like there must be some form of chocolate that you like you 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 just you can't not like chocolate um and that's the vibe i get from pvpers like it can't be that you really do you just haven't really tried the right version of pvp but if if you try the right version you're gonna love it so we we just have to find the right way to spin it for Mm -hmm. you so that so that you'll realize that you really love it but well and i the other, thing, PvP. the other thing is everyone refers to corruption and I do, you know, I, sure. I, I think that's going to prevent a lot of people from attacking for no reason. Uh, I, I think that's clearly, I think, I think it will work if they do it, as I say, but if they the, don't nerf it, but well, even if they do, <laughs> uh, even if it stays, the, whatever, there will always be a subset. It might be small. But there will always be a subset of players who want to uh, play corrupted. They they want that rush. They want that challenge. Um, and you know the other thing that I, that just comes to my mind with this PVE population in general, and there are varying groups within that. I think there were some good posts that pointed out correctly that you can't really just lump PVE as one group. People tolerate things differently they tolerate pv you know i i think i would tolerate pvp more than digs but we're still both pve players um you know but i i I think regardless you know if you are trying to have just a good fun harvesting session or something like that and you're really trying to not have any combat the fact that someone turns red because they killed you (laughs) it's probably not going to make you feel much better, (laughs) right? You've lost experience. You've lost time. You've lost materials. The fact that they turned red, I I don't think is going to make the players that suffer those player kills feel better. Um, It might be. Well, no, that's my joy. If you fall into that trap, I've won. You've lost. You've gone to the dark side. You have to be reconciled. Me, whatever I've lost, no skin off my back. I can get it again. I mean, even, even and for some, it might initially like, oh, well, you, you know, you're going to be a bounty hunter is going to come find you. But if that happens three, four, five times, um, and not necessarily even in one play session, like if that happens four times over the course of a week or two, that's still a lot. 
to deal with. Yeah. And so, you know, I, 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 while I do think it's going to prevent the majority of players from just going out and just killing whoever they want, there, there will always be this group of players <laughs> that really don't care. And that's where they're going to find their fun. Um, so that was the other part those of are, my post. You know, I think those are the people that are also going to like buy accounts from gold farmer sites that like grind multiple characters to 50 all at once and then yeah. sell the accounts to people. And so, you know, they can do that and then stop playing that character and jump on a different one on a different account. And like every month they swap out um, which, which of their um, purchased max out accounts they want to go and be a bad person on. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know. <laughs> and, and we don't know an alts, right? Uh, I mean, at this point, you're not going to know if someone's an alt of someone else. So there, there will be this potentially yeah. anonymous nature of, of being able to kill whoever you want and then just log out and go back to your main. But, um, but it is what it is. That's, that's, this is where I'm kind of tired of the conversation. And I bolded the last part of my, my, my response. Um, where did it go? I just lost what I was looking at. Um, I bolded it and I said, what everyone needs to understand is that at this point in the development of Ashes of Creation, the target audience has been chosen. If you are happy with the current design, congratulations, you are the intended audience. If you are unhappy with the current design pillars, then sorry, but in the immortal worlds of Stephen the Great, maybe this game is not for you. Um, that's just where we're at. So to continue mm -hmm. having these posts, PVP, PVE, like it's, it's not going to change anything. Uh, so. Also, another thing is that, you know, there's a focus on PVP versus PVE. Um, I've been reminded playing Nightingale the last few days um, about uh, RPers. And again, I always love it when the RPers would come on and try and get um, uh, Stephen to talk about how he's going to support them. And initially was like, of course we are. People can RP in taverns. And they're like, what? what does that mean? But, you know, one of the things <laughs> is that, you know, um, RPers, the ones who are setting up like wedding events or, you know, they have these special events that they set up and they don't want people crashing them and disrupting them and all that stuff. And they prefer to have separate RP servers in addition to, you know, separate PVE servers where, they just don't want their stuff interrupted by people who are not going to participate in the RP. Um, I'm having that in Nightingale because I'm taking a lot of photo shots in my uh, AI companion recruit. Um, I can I can turn off the HUD. I cannot turn off my companion's nameplate. So I'm trying to take photo shoots um, and uh, screenshots and my a uh, companion will wander in with their nameplate showing and ruin my shot. I'm like, just <laughs> stay over. Dude, stay get, 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 um, get one of those uh, products going where you can uh, cut it out automatically for you. And it'll, it'll do the content to wear fill. And then, you know, only people who really look close will notice it. Some kind of add on. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I, I, I'm like, yeah, I just don't want my shit interrupted. Like, I'm trying to have this kind of session, and I don't want what I'm doing right now to be interrupted by other players deciding they're going to force me to have the fun that they want to have instead of the fun that I'm looking for in that moment. Um, and uh, for people who the fun is, yeah, going and making other people mad as you disrupt whatever they're doing so that you can have combat. That's great from their side. It's not so fun for people who, you know, aren't into that. Um, so. We are getting close to the end here. Um, there was a lot more to talk about, but as always, we will eventually run into uh, having down periods of things uh, to go over all this. I really want to go over this conversation about uh, could PVE servers exist? Um, I feel like that would be a very fun discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe, uh, maybe in two weeks we'll do that one because next week we're going to be talking about the fighter. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I, I, <laughs> you think it's going to be a big bore? Well, I, I, I think that, but then, you know, 
this last one everybody thought was going to be incredibly boring, right? Um, you know, oh, you know, commissions, yay, cool. We'll get to see some daily quests. How fun! And it actually turned out pretty good. Like it was, it was not a bad stream. Um, so I don't know. I, I have no idea. Like I said, I could come yeah. away really wanting to play a fighter. Um, I could come away isn't, thinking, wow, we have years to go. I, so I don't really know. Isn't uh, Fighter the one that had the Essence Hammer Strike? I believe so. Um, and we haven't seen those recently, I think, since no, people were complaining haven't. about all of them. Um, so I'm I don't wondering... think we saw them in that skirmish with the caravans either. Yeah, I'm saying I don't think we've seen any of those Essence weapons like the... Um, the uh, cleric, the I think, had then. castigation. No, the cleric had a whip. Oh, right. Um, and maybe a ja there was a javelin. So there's uh, these essence weapons that um, people were complaining that they don't know why. You know, they, wa they want those to look like the weapon that's being wielded. Um, and I'm like, all of the other uh, primary archetypes had their version of that essence weapon that was not exactly what they were wielding. Um, but I haven't seen any of those in the last few months. So I'm wondering if those are still in or not. Um, I wonder if we will not see Hammer Strike and if it's still in the game. So yeah, yeah, we we'll should ask that. We will definitely I see. You know, speaking forward to it. real quickly about um... The cleric. There was a question on here that I really liked that I just wanted to mention real quick. Um, and we uh, usually go uh, over some of the questions beforehand, but time has gotten away from us here. Uh, one was just, are there any differences in how clerics function in the different racial societies? Does a cleric's choice and patron deity change how they play in a game? Actually, I never thought of that. Like, can your character like your actual play change based off who you are worshiping. Um, I don't know of any games. Say the, say the question again. What was do, the question? Does a cleric's choice and patron deity change how they play in game? Mm. I mean, I, I think of like the subclasses in tabletop games where, yes, you might be a cleric, but you're a cleric of the this or a cleric of the that. And so you'll have certain innate spells that you will have, you know, by default in your kit, plus other ones that you'll uh, be able to get. Some of those innate ones might be outside of the uh, normal list. So there might be some that are specific to uh, that type, plus some of the other abilities as you uh, level up have their own uh, flavor and branding to them. So uh, I, I could definitely see that being one thing they could apply here, that your deity drives um, some of those features for you, that you pick it early on, and then as you advance, you're kind of um, able to specialize into the features that they offer, or potentially swap I, over to a different one at some point. At the very least, um, we do have uh, religious organizations and religious augments so we can expect the uh, different religions to have different augments available, and those do affect uh, your um, primary skills. So it might not come through the primary archetype itself, uh, but religions will have augments that will affect your abilities, even if you're not a cleric. Yeah. It's just an interesting, uh, oh, interesting, interesting question. I had never thought about a class uh, or, or your play style changing based off of who you were actually, um, you know, worshiping or whatever. So um, I think yeah. that's part of what religious augments are for. Yeah. So, well, I'm trying to log in uh, to see if there's anyone worth rating, but I can't. For some reason, te uh, text messaging has been like a mess for us this weekend. I don't know if everything's slow or late, delayed. Um, and of course, I'm trying to log in and um, have to have a code 
which is being currently texted to my phone and I am not getting it. So uh, it does not look like we'll be able to raid anybody, but um, all right. I think we are at uh, the end here. So we are going to go ahead and, and shut down. But like I said, on Friday is the next live stream. It is the fighter. Hopefully seeing the next story arc that we ended with uh, last stream. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Miss because of Dragon's Dogma. Well, yes, uh, you can find us luckily on YouTube, on Spotify, on a lot of, uh, if you like podcasts as well. So, um, but yeah, we will be back here next Sunday. Uh, hopefully y'all join us in the stream. All of Usually all three of us are in Twitch chat, uh, kind of uh, watching along with everyone else as they go through their live stream. So um, it's also a really great place to get questions answered. Uh, so if you have questions, I've, I've learned this since we're only allowed one question on the forums. Uh, I typically make it unrelated to the stream <laughs> if it's something that I'm curious about. Uh, cause I know that they do a very good job of answering stream questions. So, um, mm. anyways, a little tip there. So, uh, everyone have a great, uh, great week and thank you for watching us either live or on record and we will see you next Sunday. Mm -hmm. See you later, everybody. Yeah. I remember to use my left hand this time. <laughs> <laughs>